to our own pain from who starred in Hollyoaks. So hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm really good. I'm back home at the moment. Kind, kind of near you guys. I'm in Bournemouth, so... That is very close to Cornwall. Sorry? That's very close to Cornwall. Yeah, yeah, I've been to Cornwall as well. I like it. <laughs> Now, by the, just speaking to you for uh, you know a minute before the interview, there it sounds like things are hectic for you at the moment. Since um... you know, oh, yeah, it, but in a really really good way because obviously when you leave like a sort of long running show and you're in, you're really secure there. Obviously, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and I've been really fortunate um, that I've been involved in two feature films since that are um, kind of progressing in a really good way. Um, so that's really exciting. Yeah. Good. And obviously, just to fill people in, um, you, you played a character, Annalise Appleton, in Hollyoaks. Yeah, yeah, Annalise was my character in Hollyoaks. Um, she was amazing to play, so much fun, and I, I do miss playing her. Um, she's kind of one of those girls that you kind of you laugh at her, do you know what I mean? She's oh. in some ways, but um, yeah, just really fun to play. Worked with some really lovely people on there, so miss them, you know, but it was just time to move on, I guess. A few months ago, we had Emmett, um, Emmett J. Scanlon on the show. Oh, um, brilliant! Did you get to work yeah, with him? <laughs> he is exactly. He really he he came on the sh on the show and he was saying that instead of acting, he wished he went into the porn industry. So it's very porn um. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard him say that. Um, he's very funny. He, he sounds like something he might say. <laughs> now, um, obviously, in, how did you get your part in Hollyoaks? Was it something you auditioned for? Yeah, yeah. It was through my agent, um, kind of bog standard way of auditioning for TV, um, they had, it, but at the time, they didn't have my character written at all. Um, they, Hollyoaks sometimes do these big general auditions just to kind of see new actors um, if they think they're going to write new characters in. And obviously they knew that they were going to write some students in for the upcoming year. Um, and so I just got in front of the camera, I did some old scripts. Um, I think I read some stuff of Stephanie Dulladine, who's like a really famous character from Hollyoaks, so... That was funny. And then um, from there, I guess, they started writing the student characters that became our characters. And um, it was gruelling in the end. I think I, I did four auditions for it. Um, the first one was in London, but then I travelled up to Liverpool three times for it. So I felt like I really earned it in the end. <laughs> now, was, was this your first kind of television, you know, programme that you were on? Was this yeah, the first break yeah, you had? Yeah, my first sort of big gig. Because I went to drama school in London, and um, I had a year of sort of not scraping for jobs but you know auditioning a lot and getting little bits and bobs but not really getting a sort of big break as it were and this was sort of my big opportunity and it changed it absolutely changed my life it was um amazing um getting to move to liverpool as well liverpool's great and give a shout out to the scouters <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're brilliant um yeah it was insane just overnight i had to just move away find somewhere in Liverpool, um, and yeah, work with lots of new lovely people. I mean, that's such a big kind of break to get because Hollyoaks is one of the biggest and most watched in soap yeah. operas around, and it has such a big following. So to get that gig on one of your first big television yeah. gigs must have been such a you know fantastic. It's insane! It's not even like I got a couple of eps. You know, I didn't even understand at the time when they said you're a regular. I didn't really even know what that meant. I was just all I know is I have a six month contract, and that's brilliant, and I'll see what happens. And then, next thing I know, I've been in it for a year and a half. Um, but yeah, it was, it was overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming. Um, but it's great because, you know, they work so hard at Hollyoaks. I felt like I had, I've got a really good grounding now for the future. So it worked out pretty well. Now, when you, you know, left the show, Hollyoaks, was that something that was your decision or was it the, the, the show's decision? Yeah. It was my decision, actually. And it wasn't an easy one. This is the thing. A lot of people say to me, oh, why did you go? But... Um, for me, because I've been in it, it was my first TV job, obviously, and I've already been in it for 18 months. When it came to being offered another contract, I just thought, you know, I can't get stuck. If, if I'd been doing telly for a while and I was a bit older, I think I'd, I'd definitely stay because the people are so lovely. And, you know, my character was brilliant, just so much fun to play. But I think there's a part of me that just wants to do loads of like different things and I just didn't want to just end up just doing one thing that was all it was but I mean the nice thing is that the door's been left open and you know that's that's a compliment you know and we'll see what happens but yeah I just I'm so glad that I did because I had that amazing experience and now I'm doing other things as well so look 
Looking back, would you say now that you would never say never to returning in the role um, of Annalise? Yeah. Would, would you always never keep that open? Never anything. <laughs> I, like, you've got to like, <laughs> just accept the fact you're an actor and you've got to just scrape for whatever job you get. You know, unfortunately, that's kind of just the climate of it. Um, so I think I, it would be very silly for me to say, oh, no, I'd, I'd never go back because, you know, I, it seems like people really like my character and... Um, because I had such a great time, it would be silly for me to say, no, no, I've moved on. Um, but at the moment, you know, that I'm just, I'm spreading my wings a little bit. But no, never say never to anything, apart from porn. I, I just, <laughs> just at this point, I'd like to make that clear. <laughs> I will not do porn, <laughs> but I'll do most things. <laughs> uh, I Emmett was very, he was very funny. I didn't expect him to... To be as um, not mental, but just crazy as he was, it was it was entertaining. That, well, that was just... that's his character. I think his character's driven him crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, like you said, you've gone on. A lot of people they they you see they leave the the soap operas and they kind of have you know big ambitions to do other things, but they don't necessarily do a lot. Whereas you, for instance, have gone on from strength to strength. I'm hearing so many things. Mm. Um, doing your own feature films, for instance. I know, I know, it's amazing. I it kind of. Oh, it is genuinely, I was in the, in the right place at the right time with one of the films, with Vendetta. Um, I've, so, because I've done two, um, the other one is just through a friend, so I'm very lucky with that as well. It's, it's been pure luck with these films. Um, but, yeah, I've basically just had a chat with Jonathan Soscott um, about Vendetta, and he just thought I was right for the part. It, it, sometimes it literally is just being in the right place at the right time, which is uh, great. <laughs> Now, I might be completely wrong here. Um, are you working with Danny Dyer? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> ben, basically, the two films, um, one's called Stalled and one's called Vendetta, uh, and they're both completed now. And Vendetta is uh, starring Danny Dyer and Roxanne McKee, who used to be on Hollyoaks, and she's lovely as well. Um, and then there's a couple of other people. Uh, Joseph Aitlin, who is on Game of Thrones at the moment, as well as Roxanne. Just, um, yeah, amazing cast. And, yeah, work with Danny, who is lovely. That is crazy. So you, you're doing some amazing projects right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't believe my luck, really. I'm, I'm just really grateful because, like I say, with actors, <laughs> you don't know which way it's going to go, especially after a soap opera. Um, but, yeah, it, it has been brilliant, to work, especially just to work with some very talented people as well because... Um, that I, did you, I don't know if you saw on E4 there was a drama called Utopia yes um, and that was that was a really good drama and I worked with an actor called Alistair Petrie who played one of the um, people in that and he's amazing so I'm giving him a shout out because he's just so talented but yeah Danny Dyer as well and Roxanne they're just brilliant actors and people underestimate um, A. Soap actors and B. Danny Dyer like he's so talented He's, he's really, really brilliant, and I think this film is going to be a really important one for him in terms of his career and showing, you know, what he can do. So I'm really excited for it, um, and it's, oh, it's like a waiting game. <laughs> we, we, filmed it in, um, oh, we filmed it in March, but it's not out in the cinema till November, so I'm just waiting for everyone to be able to see it, really. But with um, with Danny Dyer, is he as hard in real life that, that I, I mean, does he act as um, tough? I better reword that, actually. No, no, no I'm just laughing because it's, <laughs> oh, it's just funny. Like, the thing is, because of his accent, people just... And obviously, he does all these hard man films. And exactly. Stuff, he does them very well. Um, but, like, the way I would describe Danny <laughs> is like... He's like the lion from The Wizard of Oz. I never expected that one to come. Generally, <laughs> <laughs> it's just come to me, like... He's not fierce. He's like this big, cuddly, lovely guy with a lot of facial hair at the moment. Um, and he just, whenever I see him on set, he just gives me a massive hug. And oh. he just makes you feel like, because obviously when you first meet him, you're like, oh, Danny Dye, you know, I've seen you in the business and all these big films and stuff. And then he just gave me a massive hug. He was like, oh, you're right, Tam. And just have a little chat before he goes on set and stuff. And yeah, he's just so sweet. <laughs> You will hate me saying that. <laughs> you have to play it back to him. So sweet, but he is really sweet. Um, um, and I think people have got the wrong idea about him. I think he gets a really bad like rap, and he doesn't deserve it at all. Like From meeting him in person and from working with him, he's just the complete opposite. Um, yeah, so sweet. Oh. <laughs> but prior to, obviously, getting your big break on Hollyoaks, did you get knockbacks from auditions? Did you audition and not get the part? God, 
yeah. Now, how, obviously, <laughs> I don't want to make out like I didn't get any jobs, I did. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, of course. I mean, you know, for every job you get, you get 10 knockbacks and that's just, you could be the most talented actor in the world, but I doubt, you know, even those guys, you know, don't get the odd refusal. Um, you just have to get used to it. It is hard. It's not an easy thing, especially when you, you know, for big roles where you prepare and, you know, you do so much research and everything to then, you know, and especially if you get far, you get recalled and then you get closer and closer to thinking, yes, I'm going to get this and I'm right for it. And you're always convinced that you're right for it. You know, oh, I, can, I can play that role, you know. But, um, get into it. It, you know, you just get used to it after a while and you kind of toughen up. Because obviously when you go to drama school or, or you start out, however you start out in this industry, you, you, you know, you have all these dreams, but the reality is that you are going to get the knockbacks as well. Um, but I've learned to get used to it. You have to just do an audition and walk away and forget about it and get on with your day. And then, you know, if you get good news, it's a bonus. Now, if kind of if there's any upcoming actors and actresses listening at the moment, what kind of advice would you give them? If if you were just give them some sound solid advice, what would you say? Oh, just keep going, but only do it if you're obsessed. Only do it if you're mentally obsessed with it. Don't do it if you just think if you've been watching people on these reality shows and you think I'd like to be on telly. Don't bother. You might, um, unless you happen to be brilliant, which is fine, but. Um, Make sure that you're absolutely obsessed with it and there's nothing else that you, you know, you're really talented at and would like to do. <laughs> but at the same time, like, enjoy it. Um, put your heart and soul into it. And if, if you're maybe at school or college and you're not sure but you'd like to give it a go, do some Amdram first because that's what I did. I kind of um, joined a couple of... I joined, like, a kind of academy around Bournemouth where I was from. Um, and I did, like, a little Amdram theatre company as well and just did as many plays as I could and kind of learnt from older actors around me and made sure that it was really something I wanted to do. Um, so that's a good way in, as well as obviously trying to apply for drama school and stuff, which is a headache and a half, but it's worth it if you get in. <laughs> but, yeah, just throw yourself into it, definitely. That's great advice. But um, just um, quickly before the uh, end of the interview, tell us a little bit about Jenny Clark. Jenny Clark, oh, well, she's very different to Annalise. I kind of made her a bit of a tomboy in my head because Annalise was like always done up every day, heels on, even when she's scrubbing the oven, you know, she was all done up. So Jenny is a bit more sort of straight down the line, um, no messing about, um, very to the point. And she is a good, one of the good guys. Um, she's, there's a string of murders. She's trying to find out who's done it. That's, that's her simple goal in the film. Um, there's no kind of love and trust that she's doing her job. And that was really fun to play. Um, so, yeah, she's a police officer. She works really hard. You know, she just wants to do the right thing. Um, and, yeah, she, she was really fun to play in that way. And that's Vendetta. You watch the film and see for yourself. <laughs> uh, is it out it, 8th of November? Is that correct? Yeah, it's in the cinemas in November. Wow. Um, it's oh all my a gosh. bit secretive, though, because I don't know exactly what um, cinema chain, like if it's going to be an Odeon or what cinemas it's going to be in, but um, definitely a cinema release in the UK and Australia in November. Um, and that is all I know at the moment, but we're a while away yet. And you're in kind of, um, so you're playing, is it Evie in the uh, installed? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, a slightly different film. <laughs> installed is what I would describe as a zomcom. Um, basically, if you like your sort of zom zombie film, yes. it's like a zombie film, but it's a comedy. So it, it, that was really fun to be involved in. Um, my friend Dan Palmer wrote it, and he's um, starring in it as well. And he's just a really brilliant comedy writer. Um, and Evie is a complete bitch. It's <laughs> horrible. Um, and I don't usually get to play characters like that. Usually they're all lovely and sweet. So that was really great for me as an actor to sort of branch out. Yeah, um, and it's kind of one of those roles where she's talked about a lot and you think that someone's talking to her the whole time and then you reveal what I'm really like and she's just she's just a nasty girl. She's horrid. Um, <laughs> so that was really fun to play. And that, that is um, more of a cult thing because there's a thing called Fright Fest at Leicester Square, which is kind of like a festival of um, those sort of films, like horror films and stuff. Uh, apparently it's massive, like it's um, the biggest thing that this film could have could have done, really. Um, and tickets are still on sale for that, so you can go down and catch catch me installed. Um, and yeah, that's on in August, I think, for the whole month, I think. 
Uh, it's so exciting hearing what you're up to, and I really hope we stay in contact and you come on the show loads more times to oh. promote your upcoming projects. You've been an amazing guest. Oh, thank you very much. It's been lovely. I like listening to your accent. Oh, do I have an accent? <laughs> oh, what accent do I have? Do you not have, like, a Cornish accent a little bit? Oh, no, that's, that's not good. <laughs> are, you, are you not, like, a bit West Country, though? Yeah, I, I don't In some, some of the things I pronounce, but I try and work on my my voice to not sound too Cornish. Oh, really? Oh, OK. Well, I like it. Oh, I thank you. I like your accent. Well, I like listening to people's voices. You sound like a very nice British... British girl with that kind of accent. I speak very well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've just sent you a tweet saying you're an amazing guest as well on Twitter. Oh, bless you. Okay, I might follow you back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very you. much. Good luck. Lovely. Good luck with the projects. Um, come on, the, come on the show again before the before the films out in the cinemas, and we'll get that promoted as well. Brilliant. Okay, we'll do. Thank yeah. you very much. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye.